Why, hello? Oh, it would seem it's starting to just barely drip, which is like the opposite of what I was hoping for today, because I went up to Tractor Supply during what is apparently the only dry time of the day. Very annoyed, very annoyed. But here's hoping that's just a couple little drips and not like a big system coming. Hard to tell, but there's a lot of blue jays squawking, chickadees and stuff like that, all making a lot of noise. But I'm here to talk to you about wood chips today. And I would like to talk about the limitations of large bulk quantities of wood chips for a small scale operation and therefore let you know some changes that I'm trying out in the short term. So, to give you an idea of what I'm talking about here, this is where the wood chips have been for years. They would start there, go about four foot tall, come all the way to here. That's the front end of my Prius, so let's back up a little bit so you can really see the scale of things. That is just a normal size, small type snow shovel. regular size trash can massive size log went from here probably about here five foot tall all the way back to there and that's the quantity that chip drop gives you like it or not and something you may have noticed in recent videos is that this pile of wood chips is just basically soil at this point I've been using it as soil, but um, it's definitely not chips anymore, nor is it particularly absorbent. It's well draining, but it's not humongously absorbent. I have nervousness that if, if I just completely stop having wood chips, that if I decide I want to do a big load of them again, I might face complaints that I haven't faced in the past. There's always that risk with um, taking a break off of something that may or may not be annoying your neighbors. They may or may not be saying so. You know? But, here's the thing. When it's not that absorbent, it doesn't really serve a lot of the purposes that I need it for. Primarily the purpose that it's not serving is for the birds. I could go through and fully reapply everything around the garden for sure and bring up the level of some of these sunken paths and things like that. Sure, I could do that. Um... And then for a short period of time, those wood chips would be somewhat absorbent and not just mud. But for the purposes of the birds, it's mud. This is just mud. No matter what I do, they are, it's just not absorbent enough. And so I want to give it a chance to see if purchased pine shavings, yeah, 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 I know, super wasteful. I want to give it a chance to see if that would do better. And if their feet would be more comfortable and if they'll be more hygienic. Because it's pretty filthy in there a lot of the times. If I'm 100% honest. We dirty birds, huh? We dirty birds. Yeah. Dirty birds. And therefore also dirty eggs. Especially since I don't get in there every single day. So I literally just cleaned this out two days ago. Now I did not apply new wood chips, but I turned up the wood chips kind of near the bottom, which are really the same amount of spent. But this is what happens to those wood chips very quickly in there. This is the top layer. It's just mud, like poop mud. 
literally poop mud. It wasn't nearly this bad when the wood chips were fresher. And I could get a whole new load, but then eventually, I would say within six months, the, you know, 30 yards or so, 60, 30 or 60 yards, because it's a full-size dump truck that they bring, and they won't bring less. The way to get less is to flag down a company actively doing a tree, like doing a tree right now. And you go flag them down and say, hey, could you dump that here? But if you're going to rely on chip drop, you have to be ready for humongous quantities. And it has served me so well. But I'm also so exhausted with lugging around wood chips all the time that um, I did order. So here's some changes that are happening. It's in the background, okay. You in there, birds? Hi. Brown Brown, how are you? So one of the things I'm doing is getting wood chips as a trial. I'm trying getting them from Tractor Supply. I just picked them up today. I want to do another load of gunk out of their aviary to bring the height of the ceiling back to what it used to be because as the floor gets higher, the ceiling gets lower, you know? Like, that's how that works. This is a very, very wet situation that I'm in. It's always soggy here. Like, always soggy here. Like, I turned that up just a couple days ago and it's just like a cake of poop, right? And the same thing in the back there. This isn't quite as bad because I keep throwing greens right here. Um, but underneath I think it's that bad. It's just really, really damp around here. And it's been raining. We've been able to keep the porch dry. I think I want to make like a normal compost here. Maybe enclose it with rocks from the collapsing retainer wall that I don't plan to continue having. Um, yeah, all of those things, yes. However, it's really not making it a lot easier to keep them nice. As, uh, you know, fresh wood chips stay fresh for like a day. And so I want to see if the shavings that are meant for poultry care would do better for their little feet. I do have a couple that appear to have gotten frostbite on their toes over the winter too, which of course they don't show any signs of at all until you pick them up and check their feet. So it's, it's kind of hard to avoid. So the dampness of the floor seems to have negatively impacted them in that way too. So, if possible, I would like to shovel more of this out of there. If it's not possible, I might just bust open the first bag and get it in there. See how it goes. The eight cubic feet bags are seven bucks at Tractor Supply. It's a drive to get up there, but I've got one not too, too far from here. They're never, like, in the city. The birds are there right now, too. They have the chickens in the... In the little... <laughs> the little peeps are in there. It's so cute. Like, the little tiny chickens. They're very adorable. But I don't want to mix and match chickens and quail, frankly. I really don't. So, this is nerve-wracking to decide to not have humongous quantities of wood chips because I certainly could use more up here for example because that front edge of that retainer wall is sinking and I could use more back back in the far corner back there where there there's like a three foot ditch that I backfilled with wood chips and that that's sunk down and I'm kind of falling in and I could certainly put a new layer over this entire everything here. 
and make this actually level throughout here. I could do all of those things. None of them are particularly necessary right now, is the honest truth of the matter. And I'm exhausted. So I'd like to kind of have a rain check on all those things where I could come back to it later. And the other thing that I decided to do was get a small electric chipper so that I can process down some of the sticks that I cut in the course of caring for all of this space here and, you know, chip down things like hollow stalks, but also things like big heckin' branches off of the hedge and stuff like that. Because, you know, as much as I put down new wood chips all the time, they no longer have food value for the mushrooms either. They have to be fresh cut. Like fresh cut off the living tree to have food value for the mushrooms. So you can see the limitations there. Spring is a hard time to get chip drop anyway. It's in very high demand. Fall is a better time. Winter's the best. But you still might have a delay on winter because it really depends on how often the weather breaks that the tree companies can get out there. It would be really, really good to level all of this out. Especially this stuff that I just tore up here. Because it's very rumply bumply. And I want to, frankly, I want to camp out right here. This is intended to fit my tent when I'm ready. So, there's hopes here. <laughs> but, you know, it's not urgent. I also want to finish this trench from here to here. There's a trench there. And this is a foot and a half deep of just wood chips. And I want to backfill that. So leveling and earthworks will go a lot slower. I also want to put a bunch of wood chips down here. Because I just put a color block of daffodils in. And that turned up soil. And my soil is mostly clay. It is really sticky. So it's super nice to have these wood chips down on top. Now, the pavement goes to there. So I can keep pulling wood chips from here and from there for a little bit. But that's... The things I just listed actually are enough to have a full height pile. They are. For whatever that's worth. So, things to think about and difficult decisions. But in the meantime, the birds are going to have fresh pine shavings for a while to see if that's healthier for them. Because I think right now the most important thing is that the birds get healthy enough bedding by their feet. Because it would seem I slightly failed them this winter. And didn't even know it. So I hope you're having a really good day. I hope you enjoyed this conversation about the specific places where wood chips are best applied fresh and best applied older. The older ones are basically potting soil, especially once you add some ash out of the fireplace. And something nitrogen fixing. Or n something nitrogenous. If you do those three things together, you've got potting soil. And that is what I do for potting soil. It is. 
Anyway, hope you're having a really good day. Um, this is, uh, is this a permaculture failure? You tell me. I'm going to put it in the wood chip playlist, and I think I'm going to put it in the permaculture failures playlist. And if you think it's a fail, you let me know. Be nice, though. Please be nice. Y'all, the internet is mean. I don't like the internet. It's mean. So, <laughs> so be nice. Most of y'all are, but every now and again, I get these absolute trash can fire people in my comments. They're there just to make me upset. I can tell. You can tell the difference. So, anyway, have a good one. Thank you for visiting, and we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.